Fires downfield. Once Colin Johnson caught 20, 15, 10, five dives for the pylon. That's a touchdown. Glenn into Colin Johnson and Jacksonville has taken the lead. This is the Publix Tailgate Show. Publix Tailgate Show. J.P. Shadrick and Mike Dempsey have all the news and information you need to get you ready for today's game. The Publix Tailgate Show is brought to you by Baptist Health, Farah and Farah, Geico, and by TIAA Bank. Now to get things started, here are Mike Dempsey and J.P. Shadrick. Riding an 11-game losing skid, the Jags return home to face the top team in the AFC South. It's week 14. And today, the Jacksonville Jaguars at 1-11 and entertain the Tennessee Titans at 8-4. and Kickoff coming up at 1 o'clock. And today's game is presented by PRI Productions. Welcome into the Publix Tailgate Show. J.P. Shadrick with Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at the bank in Jacksonville. And the Jags started this losing skid against Tennessee way back in week two. They can end it today against the same team. Yeah, it was full of optimism, that loss, right? Everyone was saying, wow, you know what? We're one and one, but we hung tight with the Tennessee Titans on the road after beating the Colts. Uh, this is going to be a good season, JP, but I don't know if you ride an 11-game losing streak yeah, or you just you get just, swept up in it. <laughs> you're along for the ride. That's, uh, that's where they are right now, however. That's right. And Yeah, it was like, oh, it's a good loss. They rallied back. They got close. It's one and one. I no, can't no. tell you how many people said they were never more optimistic after a Jaguar loss than they were heading into week three. It's amazing. Yep. The rest is history. It's all been say. downhill from there, really. I yep. mean, you've lost 10 in a row since. So um, now, since then, of course, the, the Titans are in first place, 8-4. and four. The Jaguars' win over the Colts in Week 1 is actually the difference in the division standings right now, oddly enough. Right, and the Colts play uh, the Raiders today, and the, the Colts are in the seventh spot in the playoff picture in the AFC, and if they lose in Las Vegas, Vegas will take their spot because they're right behind them. So uh, the Jags could have a hand in dictating the playoff picture, but a small hand. All games count in the National Football League. It is a little foggy this morning, as it was overnight last night. It should burn off by game time. The game time temperature forecast around 72 degrees today. Let's get to the top stories and start off with a quarterback position. Mike Glennon gets his third consecutive start. Gardner Minshew this week said that he was begging to get back on the field. Head coach Doug Marone responding to those comments Wednesday. I think you get a little bit worried if it's the other way. You know what I'm saying? Where someone doesn't want to get out there. He's not a competitor. He's uh, comfortable in his role of, of maybe not playing. So, um, you know, you can have all these emotions as a player. And sometimes on the outside, you, you'll look at it and say, oh, man, he must be really upset that he's not doing this or that or, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's not how they are around their teammates and how they practice and they're still working to get better and, and do it. It's a professional football. You don't always get what you want in the NFL. And Mike Glennon gets a start today and Minshew is the backup. That's the way it is. Uh, they feel like Mike Glennon is doing some things that Gardner Minshew was not doing in terms of hanging in the pocket more, exploiting the middle of the field, driving the ball downfield. He had 10 attempts of 20 or more yards last week, which is the most in the National Football League in Week 13. So he is forcing the ball down the field a little bit more, giving his wide receivers an opportunity. He still hasn't hit on that chemistry with DJ Chark, but it's only been one game that they've played together, and I'm sure we'll talk about that as we go along today. So, uh, look, uh, I think they're committed to Mike Glennon. For the short term, obviously, this franchise uh, can't be committed to anybody for the long term as we don't know who the decision makers are going to be. But uh, for now, it seems, J.P., barring a catastrophe, Mike Glennon is likely to get a few more starts for this football team. And for offensive coordinator Jay Gruden, he understands the importance of a consistent starter at the quarterback position. He's had anything but that the last few years. That's hard. You know, I had three in five games last year at Washington. I had three or four the year before that in Washington. So I've had about 10 quarterbacks I've dealt with in a small amount of time. And, and the consistency of that position is really important. It's, it's uh, critical uh, to have success. Talking to one guy, speaking the same language, catering to their strengths. And when you're changing week in and week out, it's hard to get a gauge on what they like, what they're comfortable with. Uh, that's the most difficult thing. Yeah, play calling's different. The skill player's reaction to the quarterback can be different, and the offensive line has to play. I mean, it's just a totally different feel when you're having to switch week after week after week. So having three in a row and, you know, hopefully um, for Gruden and Glennon's sake, uh, you know, the rest of the season, 
as the starting quarterback should help everybody stay on the same page. Right. You don't do it for just consistency's sake, obviously, because Jay Gruden went through all those quarterbacks because none of them were good enough <laughs> to hold right. the job for any longer <laughs> than they did. You know, so you want a guy. There were some injuries as well, though. Uh, certainly. Yes. There are always some of that. But you want a guy who you feel like this is someone you're building around. I don't think the Jaguars have that guy, no matter who they're playing at quarterback right now. So if you feel like Glennon has some tools that can help you develop some of these young pass catchers, make you competitive on a week to week basis. And they have been competitive, obviously going to overtime, the two point loss the week before uh, they're going to roll with him and try to find out what suits his game best and try to focus around that in the passing game. Let's get one final quarterback thought here. Mike Glennon performing well his first time out a couple weeks ago, not as well last week, but still has confidence in his third start this year. I mean, I, th I still think uh, even though we lost the game and had some plays, there are still a lot of good throws out there. So, uh, you know, I, I think there's, there's always going to be stuff to build on, but I feel uh, confident in myself in both, in both games. Does it get easier as you get into week three here of, of, of your starts? I feel I felt comfortable both weeks, and I, I feel comfortable again this week. Mark Long of the Associated Press with a question there. We'll hear a little more from Mike Glennon coming up in a little bit. Let's get to some of the skill guys, including rookie receiver Colin Johnson. He stepped up the last two weeks and played pretty well. 14 targets, 8 catches, 162 yards, and a touchdown in that time alone. And as the year goes on... It's getting more manageable for him. I always feel like I could always, you know, get better. Um, my mindset's I just want to be better than yesterday, and I just take it day by day. You know, I know that sounds cliche, but I really just try to push myself in that regard. But I'm just getting more comfortable out there the more I play. Um, you know, the game's slowing down for me. You know, I feel like I fully understand the offense, multiple positions. Um, so I'm just taking it week by week and just trying to improve it each and every week. He was making his mark early in the year in special teams, and then as this season has gone along, he's found his way onto the offensive field a little bit more, and it's paid off the last two weeks. He's had the opportunity to get out there with plenty of reps, and he's taking advantage, full advantage of it. Yeah, he talked about a couple weeks ago having spent some time on scout team with Mike Lennon, and so there was a degree of rapport. I mean, when you're the backup quarterback in the National Football League, and at times Mike Lennon has been the third quarterback, that you're not going to get many reps uh, in the week other than scout team stuff. But if you throw to a certain guy, maybe you have a feel for him. Mike Lennon seems to have a feel a little bit for Colin Johnson based on the performance over the last couple weeks. He needs to develop that more with some of the other guys, but it's nice to see Colin Johnson taking advantage of this extra playing time. And we look at DJ Chark's breakout in year two, made all yeah. the more remarkable by the fact that he missed all those games down the stretch. This is a major advantage for Colin Johnson, if for nothing else than to get some of the early season uh, mistakes out of the way and get himself some building blocks to turn himself into a better wide receiver who's going to be counting on a lot more in 2021. Big body, big vertical leap, and he's really starting to figure out how to use that in the offensive play. He can run a little bit too. I mean, we yep. saw that, that long touchdown play. So, uh, I mean, he's not going to be mistaken for Tyreek Hill, but, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he's a guy that – when you look, JP, uh, you wonder, can he be one of your top three guys on a good offense? And uh, the early signs are, are pretty positive that he could trend in that direction. He's a, a mid-round draft pick, but uh, if he would have come out the year before, he might have been much higher. And then he had some injury issues. Another player at Texas got a lot of the playing time and a lot of the statistics, and it just kind of the way it's worked out for him. Look, uh, yeah, that goes to pedigree, but, I mean, once you get in with a football team, it's yeah. what you do, and he has taken advantage of his opportunity. Opportunity. So whether he was undrafted, I mean, look at James Robinson, right? Undrafted doesn't matter at this point in time. I don't think it really does. So uh, it matters in your paycheck a little bit. But yes. in terms of opportunity, Colin Johnson is carving himself out a role right now. All right. This will be the first time of many today we utter the name Derrick Henry. He is certainly a storyline every time the Jags play the Tennessee Titans, and they've got to slow down the league's leading rusher today in Henry Todd Wash, Jaguars defensive coordinator knows it's priority number one. He's the one that makes them go. You know, once they get their running game going, you know, obviously then they can get into their play action, their shots towards their, their wideouts and their tight ends. But, um, you know, we've been talking all week long that obviously he's a big physical downhill runner. He's tough to tackle. You know, that's that's been proven for the last three or four years with anybody that plays him. So we got to do a good job of getting population to the football, try to have good angles to keep him uh, from bouncing outside when he can get on these smaller bodies. So, it, you know, it's just going to be important for us to be able to set edges, try to keep him 
uh, in between the tackles, and then when we get the opportunity, we got to be able to defeat his stiff arm and tackle him. Yeah, we've we've seen this firsthand, of course, when he gets outside against the little guys. That is a mismatch, and that's what they try to do in the run game with him. Right, not every team with a big back tries to do that, but you, because you have to have speed and quickness to get out there as well. I mean, Derrick Henry, uh, that long stride just eats up real estate, and uh, you know he can power you, he can outrun you. I mean, I think for his size, it, it probably has shocked defensive players playing against him for the first time and that he can move as well as he does but you would think it's counterintuitive that you'd want him running between the tackles but that's exactly I think what the Jaguars run defense is going to try to force him to do today league leader in carries and rushing yards and I think he's second in touchdowns on the ground this year and you know it's funny though it's not like it's um you know just Derrick Henry. I mean, they have a full assortment of things going on on offense. Tannehill off to play action, and the weapons outside can do some damage. And John U. Smith's one of the best tight ends in football. Well, John U.'s had an okay season, but what it is is that position in their offense is so important. And Anthony Ferkser and Michael Pruitt, all those guys, in any given week, can be the leading receiver at that position. A.J. Brown is so dangerous when the ball's in his hands provided he can stay healthy. And Corey Davis has finally had a breakout season in his fifth year in the league. He's been really dangerous all year long. And Ryan Tannehill is playing the best football of his career, carrying it over from the second half of last year. The thing is, the Titans have needed to do this because yes. their defense is not that great. And uh, they're playing a lot of high-scoring games. So uh, the way to beat Tennessee is to get into a shootout with them and, and continue to pour on your own points because they allow a ton of them, as we saw against the Cleveland Browns. Jaguars defense played pretty well last week against the Minnesota Vikings. The defensive line getting some things done in that game up in Minnesota. And head coach Doug Marone has been impressed with the unheralded group in the run game, especially lately. I think for us, when you look at it, that has been the biggest issues of when we haven't been able, you know, to control the run. We've There's two things I think you can look at. You know, it's the gap, you know, in the fifth, obviously, and then obviously the missed tackles. You know, so I guess when you're when you're fitting your gaps and you're and you're tackling well, you, know, you got a chance to be pretty darn good. Gotsis, Costin, Smoot's been playing well lately. We'll hear from him in just a moment. And it's a group that, you know, as the years going on, I think you've seen some development there from those guys. Yeah, it's ironic. Uh, the more that they've lost uh, uh, with injury attrition, they seem to have gotten a little bit better defensively. You know, and maybe that is due to development of some of these guys. I mean, Dalvin Cook had 120 yards, but. It, Took him a ton of carries to get yep. there. He was under four yards a carry, and he was under 100 yards until he got eight carries in overtime. So uh, I thought the Jags did a decent job containing him. I thought they did a pretty good job at Derrick Henry the first time, but the problem is they still give up 33 points because Ryan Tannehill threw for four touchdowns. So it's not enough just to contain Derrick Henry today because his offense is very explosive, but it is where you have to start because if you can't do that, then the Titans can do anything they want offensively. We mentioned Dewan Smoot. He's been around here for now his fourth season and is playing well lately. He leads the team in sacks, tackles for loss, and quarterback hits this year. It's a contract year for him, and he's glad to finally get an opportunity to show off. All feels great. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. My, my family's happy. I'm just I'm just happy that I'm being able to, you know, kind of show my talents later. I mean, as, as late in the season leading up to this, the end of my, end of my, end of my contract year. So, I mean, it's been great. It's been I've been happy. You know, everything's been good. You never want to see anybody go down, but it's definitely the next man up. And I've been waiting for my opportunity for four years. And, you know, in these last three starts, I've been able to, you know, put up good numbers, been getting a sack each each one of my starts. So I'm just trying to just keep it going. So Smoot uh, taking advantage of his opportunity now in a starting role down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much on pace in the sack department to do what he did last year. Although last year we were looking at it this week. I believe he had seven quarterback hits that resulted in six sacks. So it was like every time he got near the quarterback, he got him on the ground. He's getting around the quarterback more this year. The percentage is down, but it's more of a normal percentage. And he's on pace for about a similar half dozen sacks uh, this year, uh, which is good because it's a contract year for Dwan Smoot. He talked this week about how happy he is in Jacksonville. Yep. He'd like to stay. It's going to be a lot of decisions on guys like him that aren't superstars but are what you feel could be good depth pieces, even on a really good football team. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what kind of offers he gets this off season. You got to have people here. I mean, you, do. you know, that's how it works. There you have it. Some of today's top stories, the Jaguars game day radio broadcast is presented by Vice star credit union. If you believe free checking is better, join Vice star that's checking with no fees and no minimums. No kidding at Vice star. They never forget that it's your money. 
We're just getting started on the Publix Tailgate Show. We'll come back with Jaguars running backs coach Terry Ravisky. He'll take us inside the mindset of undrafted rookie running back James Robinson. The Titans and the Jaguars tee it up today at 1 o'clock. And from TIAA Bank Field, this is the Publix Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. By Vistar Credit Union, J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bank Field. The Public Stillgate Show continues. Titans, Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock in Week 14. And this portion of the Public Stillgate Show is brought to you by your Southern Ford dealers. And what a running back matchup today. Derrick Henry, league's leading rusher. James Robinson, the third leading rusher in the NFL, undrafted rookie. You know, we, we've said it throughout the year. He's not just good for an undrafted player. He's not just good for a rookie. This guy has proven to be a good, really good running back. Uh, he's having a Pro Bowl season. Whether he gets that recognition or not, he's deserving of it. He's having the best rookie season of any undrafted running back in league history, honestly, so at least since the AFL-NFL merger. And uh, he's been phenomenal, JP. He's been the team MVP. He's shown up every week. He's produced big numbers, and he's done it on a team that doesn't have game script in the running game's favor. They're behind a lot in the second half. That's when you pile up a lot of yardage as a running back when your team is ahead, but they've been able to stay with him because he's been so effective, averaging over four yards a carry basically every week of the season. He's been a benefit in the passing game as well. Never needs to come off the field. 
tough as can be, durable. I, I don't know what else you could say about James Robinson, but thankfully the Jaguars have him on their team. Let's hear from Terry Rubisky, Jaguars running backs coach. He's been in this game for a long, long time and has some comparisons in mind. You've coached a lot of great running backs over the years. Whose style does he remind you of now that you've had, what, 12 games with him? I would say, I don't know. I, I think I'd have to start off saying maybe Eric Dickerson. Eric was a big, powerful guy, uh, long, tall. Eric obviously was longer and taller than him and probably uh, faster, but uh, he would be more that kind of guy. Um, I, w- I, would, I might want to compare him to a guy I had named Bo Jackson, but I better not do that. <laughs> uh, that guy was a little bit uh, unhuman. Uh, he couldn't be with Marcus Allen. Uh, you know, he, he, I had a guy in Washington, D.C. that had a pretty good career named Stephen Davis. And, uh, Stephen was, uh, Stephen was a good back. The other guy that I had, like, like James would have been a guy named Terry Allen. Terry Allen, I think, went over to Clemson. I had him. He used to be with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, you know, all these guys probably was before you was born, Jay. So I don't know if you, <laughs> I don't know if you know about these guys, but, um, he would be in that category like, uh, uh Stephen Davis, uh, uh, Terry Allen, those kind of guys. Just, uh, just slippery, uh, very, very good running behind his pads. Uh, can see a hole and get to it, can jump cut when he needs to, uh, good hands, better hands coming out of the backfield than people think. And uh, out in space was hard to get down, had a, a slipperiness about him that, uh, you know, guys guys would hit him and fall off. You know, it's like, wow, he must be got Vaseline on or something. You know, guys hit him and fall off of him. So the, he, he would probably be, in, he'd probably be in that category. I think the, uh, the top, and I hate to always call that, but the top three guys I've ever coached have been around would have been a, a Bo Jackson, Marcus Allen, Eric Dickerson, and um, then the next group would have been the Terry Allens. Um, uh, oh, you know what else? I miss a guy. I miss a guy. Now that uh, see, you make me, you made me open up that, that that cabinet a little bit. See, that was a guy <laughs> I had. That was a guy I had in Atlanta named Michael Turner. Ah, yes. The guy I had in Atlanta named Michael Turner, but that uh, I had him in Atlanta when we left Atlanta. He was the leading rusher, uh, the leading probably the leading scorer. Uh, he was uh, him and James was exactly the same. Mike might have been a little bit faster, but that's the same guy. Just a, um, I call him a squat, squatty body with a big head that can put that head on you and run over you, and I uh, can run away from you, can step on you. Uh, and Mike had great, just like, just like, just like this guy. Mike had great, great leg drive. Uh, one guy hitting him, two guys hitting him. Uh, Mike would have five or six guys that hit him. He could drag him in just like you saw this guy do uh, with a touchdown a week ago. Uh, got hit on about the four yard line and drug about four guys in the end zone for touchdowns. Uh, I'd have to say he'd been, been probably been like that guy. I knew you'd have a long list of guys. I knew I could yeah, count on you for that. Now, you mentioned the slippery aspect of his game, you know, having tacklers break off of him. Is that something you can teach? No, that's just him. That's something he's got. That's something those guys have. Uh, uh, I like to say I give, I give it to him, but I didn't. God gave it to him. Uh, you can teach a guy how to uh, plant, cut, you know, and uh, put your foot in the ground and go left, go right, give him a leg, take it away. You can teach a lot of that stuff. Uh, stiff arm. You can definitely teach a guy how to stiff arm a guy and be good with it. Uh, but Jamie's got that God given ability to, uh, get on low, get behind his pads, uh, drive and turn with his legs and his feet and, uh, and be slippery. Uh, like I said, be slippery to a point that, uh, they'll fall off. You know, the, the guys will hit him and fall right off of him. Terry Rubisky with us, Jaguars running backs coach. How is James stamina? I mean, it's the equivalent of a college season now so far. And he's been the only running back really to get touches the last uh, month or so, it feels like. There's been a few exceptions. How's he holding up physically and, and mentally after this grind? Well, uh, he, I think he's holding up well. I think he's doing good. Uh, I think James does a, a, a very good job of taking care of his body. Uh, you know, on his off days, I think he's doing the things he needs to do to stay fresh, to stay good. Uh, I think he's had times that he uh, looked to the sideline and maybe want to come out. You know, he might want to rest, but uh, I, like I told him, he's very, uh, he's barely eligible to, he's barely, barely eligible to vote. So you got to be eligible to vote before you can come out and rest. No, he ain't doing that. He's still young. You're still fresh. We still need you in the game to go play. You got to go play. So, uh, he, uh, he's, he's doing okay. He's run the ball, what, 212 times this year. 12 of those carries, only 12 are for negative yardage. He's always fighting. Even if he gets hit in the backfield, he's finding a way to get back to the line of scrimmage somehow. That's obviously a testament to the offensive line, but certainly James as well. That combination, I think, has made that number really low this year. It's it's an exceptional number. He's always getting yardage going forward. That's certainly important. 
And that's very, very important. That's, that's, that's a big thing. Uh, that is something Coach Warhop, our O line coach, does a great job of preaching and talking about. Uh, and, and that's one thing, uh, uh, Joyce talk, Joyce O line coach says, uh, the good thing about this guy, he say he's always falling forward there. He say he's never a, a negative runner. Uh, plus he says he's a 4.4 average per carry guy, which is hard to see in a lot of guys coming out. Uh, but James is a guy who, uh, just give him a crease. Uh, he'll get it back to the line of scrimmage. You don't have to block them all. He'll get it back to the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys say, Hey, just give me a little crease. I'll get in it. Uh, James is the guy who can do it. I mean, he's a guy that, uh, tell those guys in the huddle, you know, Hey, give me just a crack. Just give me a little peep. I'll get through it. And he comes out the other side. He finds a way to come out the other side and he, he's a positive runner. That's a great thing to have. Can we get this guy in the Pro Bowl? Um, uh, that's your job. My, my <laughs> job is to do our more with it. <laughs> get him in the Pro Bowl. That becomes you guys on the radio and the PR department. And that's a PR thing. Come to think about it. Yeah, I think it's a PR thing. That's your guy's job to promote that part of it and get it going. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to keep him going north and south and keep those positive runs. Uh, to try to keep him up right, you know, everything I can do with that, try to make sure you hit the right hole and uh, do the right things in the pass protection. I'll do that. Terry Rabisky, Jaguars running backs coach, always a great visit. He's been in the league since 1982 as an assistant. We heard some of the big names, obviously. He's been around there and uh, some nice comparisons there. Michael Turner, I, I wouldn't have really thought of that, but uh, he had both guys. so um, Similar body silhouette. At least you know uh, with him. Um, yeah, and Turner's uh, faster, I think. I well, I mean, he had that nickname, the Burner, when he came <laughs> in the league. But I think he he put on weight as he got into the. By the time he actually took over the starting job in Atlanta, I don't think he was the smaller, faster guy that he was when he came into the league. But uh, nevertheless, so Terry Robisky's had a front row seat some, for some really good ones, so he knows just how good James Robinson is. No doubt about that. The uh, Jaguars have dropped 11 in a row. Today they will host the Tennessee Titans at 8-4 and four in Week 14. How about a look around the NFL, Mike? Well, they're not the only ASC South teams in action, obviously, as uh, we have no teams on a bye this week. We're beyond all the byes. Uh, elsewhere in the AFC South today, you have the 4-8 and eight Houston Texans traveling Traveling to Chicago to take on the 5-7 and seven Bears. The Texans without running back David Johnson. He was placed on the reserve COVID-19 list this weekend. So Duke Johnson will get the start at tailback for the Houston Texans. The 8-4 and four Colts are in Las Vegas taking on the 7-5 and five Raiders. This game has major playoff implications. The Colts currently occupy the 7th place in a 7-team AFC playoff field. It doesn't look at this point like it's going to get expanded to 8 uh, which was a possibility. And the NFL could still go that route if there were, uh, you know, a COVID wave that really strikes in the last month. But it doesn't look like a knock on wood we're headed for that. The Raiders are just on the outside looking in. They would be the next team out. But if they beat Indy, obviously they'll have the head-to-head tiebreaker, uh, the same record as them. So they would slide ahead of the Colts in the playoff pecking order. So we'll see. Uh, still with three weeks to go after that, a lot of shuffling to be done. But uh, the Raiders, as we followed very closely last week, uh, pulled a victory out of the jaws of defeat <laughs> Unbelievable. with basically a last second. It uh, wasn't even a Hail Mary, just the uh. last second bomb to Henry Ruggs uh, trailing the Jets, and uh, we all know how that went uh, as far as uh, draft positioning went. Uh, we, were, we were looking at the Jags being in control of the entire draft there for a minute, but uh, Jets now with a month to go still winless. Uh, in Philadelphia, rookie quarterback Jalen Hurts Going to get his first start in place of the benched Carson Wentz as the Eagles host the Saints. Uh, the Eagles have a major decision with Wentz this offseason. He's got a, over $59 million in dead cap money on the books uh, for next year. There you have it. A we'll look around the NFL. We'll go a little further on around the league a little bit later. Time now for our weekly visit with Jaguar sideline reporter Rick Ballou, presented by McGowan's Heating and Air. We call it Has Rick Lost It? All right, here they come, the major nemesis, the rival, Tennessee Titans. Yeah, they've had their way against Jacksonville. The Jags have lost six out of the last seven against Tennessee. The only win in those seven coming a year ago on Thursday night uh, here in Jacksonville. And, you know, overall, you look at Tennessee, they're a difficult team to figure out. You can go back to week two. Jags nearly won that game, losing it 33-30. to All of a sudden today, Tennessee, again, four seed playing lives, an opportunity to go out and win that division. They didn't show up last week. Gave up 38 points in the first half to Cleveland. All right, They were torched in the air. Tennessee certainly was exposed, and that's been the case all season long. 
28th against the pass, so that sets up well today for Mike Glennon. Still surprised it is Glennon. Frankly, I thought they would go back to Gardner Minshew, but the one thing that he did really got it done passing in the middle of the field. How about those six receptions in the first half to Eifert and O'Shaughnessy, something we haven't seen around here in a very long time, plus Colin Johnson had a big game. Of course, whenever you talk about Tennessee, it's Derrick Henry. Todd Wash on Thursday talked about his stiff arm and how they've identified that and practiced uh, to try to avoid that being a key for the Titans. He leads the NFL with yards rushing plus 271 carries. However, last week in that loss to Cleveland, he only got it 15 times, so he should be well-rested and ready to go. The Jaguars allow 137 yards a game. That's not a good recipe as well, although they did a nice job. At least um, the eye test told us that in their loss to Minnesota and Dalvin Cook. It was tough for me to believe that Tennessee has not won a divisional title since 2008. I was shocked by that. 2008. Colts today in Vegas. That's a tough putt. If Tennessee wins here in Jacksonville, they are the team to beat in the AFC South. Rick Ballou has Rick lost it. Presented by McGowan's Heating and Air. Proudly keeping your family comfortable since 1974. Call 904-264-COOL. With the call of the game today on CBS Sports, it's the Jaguars TV Network. Spiro Ditas and Adam Archuleta. We love those guys. We had Spiro on a couple times this year already. And we had a chance this week to catch up with Adam Archuleta, former NFL safety. And I'm going to ask him about, you know, if, if Derrick Henry gets past the second level and you're a safety, mm. what's your mindset? I'm, I'm, this, the answer you're going to hear here coming up is pretty interesting. Great college player, about a seven-year NFL career, and Archuleta now on CBS for a number of years as an analyst on NFL games. And, you know, they, they know the Jaguars very well because they see them. We see these guys a sure. few times every year, so that helps. It does. Uh, they have the familiarity with it, and uh, you know, quite frankly, no insult intended for those guys. That's because no. the Jags, no. uh, you know, don't get the uh, premier broadcast teams, the guys that, that are considered the the ones and the twos, because their games usually don't have as much uh, impact on the standings. At least they haven't in recent years, which is a shame. But uh, these guys do a really good job on the broadcast, like you said, JP. They know the squad, and I'm curious to see because I think you got to chop those legs out from under Derrick Henry. <laughs> You know, especially if you're a defensive back, going high on him doesn't seem like it's going to be a good plan of attack. You're going to get uh, a left or a right stiff arm and uh, end up on the ground while Derrick Henry runs past you like a freight train. Now, from CBS Sports, it's analyst Adam Archuleta. It's great to see you, though, Adam. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. I uh, I feel like I know the Jacksonville quite well. I'm almost like a home announcer for them. Right, the uh, the Jaguars television network with yeah. uh, Spiro and Adam on the call yet again. Let's start with this, Adam. Were you ever on a team that lost 11 in a row? And what's the mindset right now, you think? Uh, I was not on a team that, that lost 11 in a row. I, I've certainly been a part of a couple losing seasons where at this point or, you know, late November, you're out of it. So I know what that feeling is like. And I've also got to imagine that just the way that this season has gone as far as all the COVID stuff and the restrictions and the lack of camaraderie, you know, the lack of really being in there in the locker room, I I'm sure that that probably weighs on players because, you know, relationships and being there together, um, that's a big part of the game as well. And, and that's a big part of where you get your joy from. So I would imagine that this is a very difficult season for the coaches and the players who at this point not only have losing seasons, but really don't have a playoff season to look forward to. It's 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 got to be a real challenge. These are obviously two teams going in, in opposite directions since the week two matchup. The Jags haven't won since that Tennessee game in Nashville. The Titans are in first place, eight and four. They have an offense that can do a lot of different things. The defense has its moments where it can be shaky. But, you know, it's amazing how things just went totally different directions after week two. It is. And, you know, we – we had the first game of the season against the Colts. And so we thought, wow, you know, I think coming into this season, everybody kind of knew that their roster, you know, was a little young and a little inexperienced and there would be some bumps this year. But after the way they started out that Colts game with Colts, a legitimate football team, you thought, okay, well, you know, 
maybe you can kind of get something going here. Um, at the end of the day, I just think, and, and you kind of look at Tennessee as well on the defensive side of the ball. Um, the talent is just not there to be consistently good, you know, and, and in terms of the passing game and in terms of not being able to get after the passer, um, not being able to cover, you know, those things, those two things go kind of hand in hand. You have to be excited and, and pleased with the way Jacksonville has run the football. I think that's a positive part of it. But at the end of the day, um, they, they do need to upgrade their talent and they just have to get better. Adam Archuleta with us from CBS Sports. And, and you mentioned the running game for the Jaguars. And that's a great running back matchup today. Two of the top three running backs in the NFL in terms of yardage. Jarek Henry on the other side. James Robinson, the undrafted rookie for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It doesn't get much better than this matchup. Two different styles of backs, though, in Henry and Robinson. Yeah, they're very, very different. I mean, we all know what Derrick Henry brings to the table and just the, the, the commitment to their running game and just how they just kind of wear on you as the game goes on. Very similar to what Cleveland um, and how they use their running game. When you look at Tennessee, I think, you know, the, the cliche every week is announcers. We always say, well, you got to get to Derrick Henry before he gets started, right? You know, that's kind of, everybody says that. If you look at last week, what Cleveland did, they actually did that. Um, you had linebackers getting free shots, and, and, and to their credit, um, a lot of great one-on-one -on -one tackles. Um, and, and their defensive line, their front really did a nice job of keeping their linebackers clean. Uh, so that truly is really kind of the key to Tennessee. Now, when you look at Jacksonville, I think you've got to be impressed with Robinson, A. But uh, to me, when I look at them in the last couple of weeks with Glennon at quarterback, uh, they the feeling to me is that they look like a normal NFL offense, really kind of for the first time. And I think Gruden has been able to find his groove as a play caller a little bit. You know, Glennon's not a perfect quarterback, but I think – when you had Gardner in there, it was a lot of one read, scramble, try and make something happen, you know, not really. A the vaccines are good news, but global immunization is going to be a long, slow haul. Meanwhile, as a masked and cautious Europe heads into the holiday season, the virus is still spreading dangerously. We made USAA insurance for veterans like Liz and I mean, let's be honest, the running back, he's supposed to win that, you know, eight out of 10 times. The key is you've got to know where your help is. You've got to get guys running to the ball and you've got to take your shot and you've got to be aggressive. You can't come in soft and, and know that if you take your shot and you do miss, you got to make him stutter his feet and that the rest of your teammates are going to come in from inside out and give you help. If you try and play it soft you're just not going to win that battle. You, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to take your shot and you've got to have help. And, and that's really the only way you can approach it. There you have it, Adam Archuleta, CBS Sports. He didn't say high or low. I'm going to guess go no, low, though. <laughs> I would think so, right? But, uh, you know, take your shot. It's uh, If you sit there and wait for him to come to you, 
he's going to have a head of steam. You got to go in there, man. And and honestly, I mean, I understand it's a safety's worst nightmare to have Derrick Henry barreling down on you. I, I would wonder if you had a an elusive back out there on the edge as well. If he wouldn't have the same kind of answer, you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, that's that's right. the guy. You take your shot. And all of a sudden, you're grabbing grass and you're looking foolish. Uh, Derrick Henry can make you look foolish in a number of ways as well, but usually does it with a more physical aspect, whether it's a stiff arm or he flat out runs you over. And then when he gets a crack, he runs by you. Uh, So uh, we know how good he is. He led the league in rushing. He's uh, on pace to do it again. So uh, we'll see if the Jaguars can at least contain him. They did in week one or week two in the first game, I should say, between the two. but. Uh, wasn't enough as the Titans had plenty of other answers offensively. So um, it's not enough to contain Derrick Henry, but if you don't do that, you got no chance against Tennessee. Adam Archuleta, analyst, CBS Sports, does a great job with Spiro Ditas. They'll have the call today on CBS. This week's Selfies for Change player is defensive end Caleb on Chase on. Take a virtual selfie with him and unlock a donation to tackle social injustice. Get started at TIAABank.com slash selfies for change. Let's continue now with the Baptist Health connection with a player. This week is defensive lineman Adam Gotsis and uh, Mike, this is a, a guy who spent some time in Denver with the Broncos. Uh, he's out of Georgia Tech. He was a second-round pick for the Broncos. He comes over in August of this year, signed as a free agent, and he's played very well, I think, certainly the last uh, month or so for the Jaguars up front. He's not a big sack guy, but he's you know he's physical and can help you in the run game, and uh, they've needed just something to stabilize them on the defensive line. They lost so many guys oh, yeah. in the offseason and throughout the course of the season as well. And with Caleb on chase on not having a big impact in his rookie year, you need some of these linemen to step up. You saw it with Devon Hamilton before he got hurt as well. Gotsis has just been, I think, a solid, steady influence on the line for uh, the time he's played. Let's hear from Gotsis. He caught up with Ashlyn Sullivan this week, the Baptist Health connection with a player. Adam, it is pretty apparent the difference with in protein. this defense from the bye week to before the bye week. And I want to know, what is the difference? Because everyone's been telling me different things, but from your eyes, this defense has improved so much. So is there one thing that you can put your finger on that's different about this defense? I just think uh, a lot of guys got a lot of playing experience kind of before that bye week and, you know, gave us a chance to just go back and look over what we've done so far and uh, kind of correct uh, some of the mistakes that we've made. Um, also give guys a chance to assess kind of how their play's been um, in the early parts of the season. So, you know, it's always nice to come out of the bye week and be playing better football than coming out of the bye week and actually playing worse football. So, you know, we've definitely grown as a, as a team, as a unit this year. It's it's hard to win games in this league. Um, you know, I've been telling the guys it's, it's a tough thing to do, you know, across the league. And, you know, the tight games like that are the ones that you're going to win. And, I mean, we've been playing good good ball. It's just, you know, those, those tight games, you just got to find a way to win them. And uh, we haven't been able to do that just yet. But we've got a, a lot of opportunities still to come. Um, finish out the year strong so uh looking forward to that and you mentioned you've been telling guys you know how hard it is to win in this league and and you played four seasons before with the Denver Broncos and now you're here so what goals do you have for yourself here now at this next stage of your career yeah definitely I mean I want to finish out this season as as well as I can personally um you know obviously we're eliminated from playoffs but you know I believe that you know with these last games we can really set ourselves up for something bigger uh, coming next year and you know I'm hoping to be part of it here next year um you know I feel like this year was a good year just in development of guys um in executing what we could obviously you want to execute better and win those games but you know I feel like we're we're just a couple of plays away we're maybe a, a, a couple guys away from being there you know we're right there rolling with teams that are going to the playoffs that are teams that are dominating this league and we're we're right there within a score the whole the whole time with them so um we're doing things right we just need to execute it at a higher level and yeah, as I said, I think it's just like a couple pieces here here and there that, that we might be able to fit in, and we're, we're building for something great here. And, you know, as, as I think guys are seeing on the TV and guys on the team feel it and believe it, um, you know, we're playing good football. We're just – we're right at that, that little piece at the end where we can just, you know, turn that corner and, and turn those losses into wins. Right there. I mean, four out of the last five games, it's down in the final drive, so it's competitive and progressing, and that's – Great to see. All right, Adam, this Australian accent, you are from Australia. So I want to know, has it lessened some now that you've been living in America for a few years or is it still 
as as well as it would be in Australia? No, nah, it's definitely lessened a little being in uh, the States. You know, I've, I've lived here for like the last 10 years, so I've, I've lost it a little bit. But I, I get it. I do get it back a fair bit when my family comes uh, to visit because I feel like we're just talking in, in Australian slang and having fun and laughing <laughs> and doing all that stuff. So it kind of comes out a bit more when I'm around other Aussies. Do you have any players or coaches trying to talk like you and it just isn't working? <laughs> Yeah, a uh, couple guys on the D line always like to make fun of stuff. Um, most of the time, whenever <laughs> I say anything, someone's someone's copying me or saying something in in an attempt of an Aussie accent. But it's they're they're pretty British with it. I know Chris Chris Conley likes to come up up at practice with me and and joke around a fair bit, but uh, his isn't that great. Maybe you need to ask him if you get him on here. You need to ask him about it, but it's it's not great. I'm warning you. <laughs> All right, I will remember this and I will ask him because yeah. I imagine it probably isn't great. <laughs> All right, Adam, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. No worries. Adam Gotsis, the Aussie defensive lineman with the interview with Ashwin Sullivan, the Baptist Health connection with a player this week, Baptist Health changing health care for good. No worries. <laughs> Let's come back in a moment. The Public's Tailgate Show continues. We'll hear from Marcus Pollard in just a moment. The Titans and the Jaguars at 1 o'clock, and this is the Public's Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. Nothing kicks off your game better than a handful of Georgia peanuts. Power packed with protein, essential nutrients, and great taste. Georgia peanuts are the MVP for affordability, sustainability, and nutrition. To score life's touchdowns with recipes and fun facts, check out GAPeanuts.com. The perfectly powerful peanut is brought to you by the family farmers of the Georgia Peanut Commission. Peanut, get your peanuts. Kessler Creative, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, has the large format printing services running in high gear, creating large banners for marketing events, full vehicle ramps. Learn how Kessler changes the game with print and direct mail innovation. From eye-catching restaurant menus to real estate yard signs and event displays, Kessler does it all. Kessler Creative, Jacksonville, Florida. Results-driven marketing and a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars fans, did you know that with Drizzly, you can get Tito's Handmade Vodka delivered to your door in under 60 minutes? Well, you can. And now they're giving all fans $10 off their first order. Use the code JAGS10 at checkout. Just download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com and make sure you're all set to mix it up with Tito's Handmade Vodka for the perfect game day. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. And remember to use the special code JAGS10 to save $10 on your first order. 80-proof Tito's Handmade Vodka. Distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. Crafted to be savored responsibly. Sassine's Office Systems helps you manage information more efficiently, offering a full line of award-winning copiers, printers, electronic document storage solutions, mailing solutions, and IT solutions. Founded in 1981, Sassine's continues to offer unmatched customer support and world-class scalable technologies to both small businesses and Fortune 500 companies. Located in Jacksonville, Daytona, Orlando, Tampa, and Gainesville, Sassine's is ready with your office solutions. Call 888-771-2679 or visit sissines.com. Come today. Hey, Florida drivers and motorcycle riders, don't fumble. Do your part to stay safe on our roadways. Florida has observed a significant number of motorcycle fatalities and crashes. Drivers, watch for motorcycles. Don't drive distracted. Motorcycles are hard to see. Take the extra effort to look for them. Riders play defense. Always ride responsibly. Wear proper gear and make yourself more visible. Get trained and never drink and ride. On the road, safety is worth way more than two points. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202-4YOU or visit GetBetterJacks.com.
The Public's Tailgate Show continues. The Titans and the Jaguars at 1 o'clock today in Week 14. Today's game presented by PRI Productions. Jaguars Director of Player Development Marcus Pollard takes us inside the team each week, this time headed to Week 14. A weekly feature of the Public's Tailgate Show is our visit with Director of Player Engagement Marcus Pollard. It's holding it down, as always. Even into the second week of December, four games to go, you have continued to hold it down every week, and we appreciate that. You, you have to, JP. You can't just be one of these people that's going to be up one week, down the next. You got to find a way to find that juice, that passion. And just keep rolling, brother. This is what you got to do to hold it down. Every day, you get to walk into an NFL stadium to go to work. So that should be exciting. That should be exciting every day because a lot of people take that opportunity for granted and a lot of people love and relish that opportunity so why don't you just do that i like the latter relishing the opportunity to come in this building every day give it your best effort put your best foot forward and get it done every day marcus pollard with us that said the team is one and eleven they've dropped 11 straight and it's got to be difficult to come in with the mindset now it does help the last three four games except for the steelers game you know those other games around it they've been right there in the hunt just haven't been able to finish the job and get a winning result uh as 11 in a row it's got to be tough to to fight through that yeah it is it, it can be a challenge and to me that's what separates the men from the boys in this business you find guys who want to be here even though it's you know the the, the season looks bleak you find players who want to be here you find those guys who are self-motivated i like to think we have a lot of those guys in our locker room guys who are still coming to work guys are still fighting guys still putting their best effort out there to win a football game at the end of the day that's what we're here to do is win football games and they'll try to win the football game this week again with mike glennon at quarterback he'll get his third start for the jaguars veteran player and last week didn't go so well a couple interceptions lost a fumble the interception in overtime was far from ideal, of course. It set up the game-winning field goal. But he's getting the start again this week. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets them moving ahead if the performance continues to improve for him. Yeah, I, I like to think so. I think Mike's one of those guys that's veteran quarterback who's got a lot of knowledge. Uh, he brings that experience to the table. And he's a guy that's, like I talked about earlier, he's a guy that's going to keep fighting. Uh, he's been around this business long enough to understand that's what you have to do. And when you get a guy like that with some more pieces around them, guys keep fighting, you give yourself a best opportunity to win a football game, and that's what that's what we're going to do today is try to figure out how to how to win a football game. How is he the last couple of weeks just being in that starting role again and sitting down, well, not in the same room with the offensive guys, but in the same virtual meeting rooms and getting game plans going and kind of getting back in that groove as a starter again, knocking the rust off a little bit, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, sitting sitting this week, listening to some of the install and, and just to being in that environment, you know, again, it, it, you, it's easy to get those juices going, especially when you've been in the fire before and you've been had some success, you've had some failures. But at the same time, you figure out in those meetings, man, this is fun. This is exciting. Uh, this is an opportunity to go out and throw touchdowns and have fun and, and show my wife and kids that I'm a starting quarterback in the NFL again. So there are a lot of positives uh, for somebody like Mike to go out and perform uh, to a high level. Marcus Pollard with us. Great running back matchup this week. James Robinson, of course, third leading rusher in the NFL, is an undrafted rookie. He's put together a fantastic season, and we know well the Derrick Henry story. First hand, well, left hand, right hand, left arm, <laughs> stiff arm, whatever the case is. This is a great running back matchup, though. If you're into running football, it doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, this is should be an exciting one, JP, because you got two of the best matched up head-to-head uh, to go out and see who can actually, you know, run the football more effectively. I think in this game, this is going to definitely de determine the outcome. A team that runs the ball more efficiently will have a better chance, success of, of winning this game. Uh, defenses have to step up and find out how to step stop James Robinson, uh, and our defenses have to find a way to stop the big fella in Tennessee. Uh, he can be a handful, and we've experienced that left hand, right hand over the years, and uh, we got to find a way to get him on the ground. Got to hit him early and often, <laughs> and, and not let him. Don't let him get outside of the, against the little guys because that's when it gets ugly. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big, strong guy. He's probably about my size. And when you get a guy like that moving in space and you got little guys trying to come up and tackle him, it can be a disadvantage for our guys. Don't act like you're that big, Marcus. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, he's bigger than me, probably. How do I just say that? I was going to say. I mean, have you, what was the last time you stood next to him? He's a little bigger than you. He, he's man. a big man. He's definitely a big man. Marcus, we'll talk to you again next week, man. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Marcus Pollard, Director of 
Player development for the Jacksonville Jaguars, a weekly feature of the Publix Tailgate Show. Back in a moment with top stories, a little later first rounds on us as well. The Titans and the Jaguars at 1 o'clock, and it's the Publix Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, the CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing staffing firms in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI knows how important it is to find the right people for your team. See why some of Jacksonville's top companies choose CSI for their staffing needs. Visit thecsicompanies.com or call 800-582-0828 today. That's 800-582-0828 for the CSI Companies. Hey, Jaguars fans, are you ready to talk some trash? Well, nobody talks trash quite like Waste Pro, the official waste service and recycling partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Specializing in residential and commercial solid waste and recycling collection, processing, and disposal, Waste Pro is equipped to handle all your recycling and garbage removal needs. For service, call 904 731 7288. Waste Pro, caring for communities and caring for Jacksonville. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Why live with foot or ankle pain? If you have persistent pain, numbness, tingling, burning pain on the bottom of your foot, or swelling that doesn't improve with home treatment, it may be time to see Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Our foot and ankle specialists have innovative new options to help you get back in the swing of things without persistent pain that slows you down. Call JOI 2000 or go to joionline.net for an appointment. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports-watching drink of all time, Pepsi. With refreshing deliciousness specially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong. I used to care when Mike shared so hard he's built nacho cheese on my carpet, but thanks to Pepsi, even Mike can't ruin my football party. <sighs> so this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Hey, Florida drivers and motorcycle riders, don't fumble. Do your part to stay safe on our roadways. Florida has observed a significant number of motorcycle fatalities and crashes. Drivers, watch for motorcycles. Don't drive distracted. Motorcycles are hard to see. Take the extra effort to look for them. Riders play defense. Always ride responsibly. Wear proper gear and make yourself more visible. Get trained and never drink and ride. On the road, safety is worth way more than two points. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. The Publix Tailgate Show continues right now. Welcome back. The Publix Tailgate Show rolls along. J.P. Shadrick with Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bank Field. 1 o'clock kickoff time today for the 8-4 and four Titans and the 1-11 and 11 Jaguars in Week 14. 11 straight losses for the Jags. The first of those 11 straight in Nashville back in Week 2. A 33-30 loss. The Jags rallied, a furious rally to get back and tie the game, but a late field goal for Tennessee gave the Titans the win. And since then, the teams have gone in different directions, Mike. No, no question. Uh, you know, we remarked on it earlier, JP. I've heard from so many Jaguar fans said they are never more optimistic about the Jags after a loss than they were <laughs> after week two. <laughs> right. I, look, I get it. You know, you came out, you beat the Colts uh, maybe surprisingly in week one, and you went toe-to-toe with a team that went to the AFC title game the year before. So, you know, at that point, you didn't know how it was going to go. Gardner Minshew was throwing it pretty well, and you felt like, hey, you know what? This team's going to score points. If we can improve this defense, we might be dangerous. But uh, unfortunately, 10 more losses have followed 
that one. And uh, while some of them have been close, the Jags just haven't had the formula to end up with more points on the board at the end of the hour, or the three hours. 63 degrees and hazy currently in Jacksonville. Game time temperature forecast is 70 degrees, and the sun should come out a little bit later today. Let's get to today's top stories, and starting at quarterback, Mike Glennon gets his third consecutive start. Offensive coordinator Jay Gruden likes the quarterback room as a whole, but working with one signal caller as the starter helps the communication. We're dealing with three great kids, uh, guys that want to be great. They work extremely hard, uh, but as a play caller, getting to know what they like and them getting to know me a little bit, that's the biggest challenge that we have. And and now this will be the third week with Mike. Uh, hopefully uh, I'm starting to get in his head a little bit and he understands uh, – uh, where we're going and, and what I what I think he likes. So it'll ho- hopefully be beneficial. So two weeks ago, it was a better outing for Glennon. Last week, three turnovers, two interceptions, including the uh, turnover, the interception in overtime to set up the game-winning field goal for the Vikings. And took a sack in the end zone for a safety as well. So uh, it was certainly not what you saw the first time around where he was really protecting the ball. You're going to get that somewhat when you're taking chances down the field, but you look back at – That game going to overtime, JP, and you wonder if just one of those turnovers doesn't happen at the right time, uh, are the Jags winning that football game? So it's not – look, there's no ideal circumstance. None of these three quarterbacks on the Jaguars look like they're the answer for the long term. So they've cycled through them, and uh, they're just going with the guy right now that they feel for this week gives them the best opportunity to win. But I do believe, barring – Another three or four turnover performance is likely Mike Glennon's job for a little bit of time here. Well, they're still working on the connection, though, with DJ Chark Jr., the Jaguars' top wide receiver last week, had seven targets with only two catches. Glennon still has confidence in him. You know, DJ is our number one receiver and a um, big part of our offense. So, you know, hopefully we'll have uh, more success. We had a bunch of targets, not a ton of completions, but, um, you know, some games are like that. It's not, I don't know if it's necessarily me and him. It's just some games, that's how it works out. You know, we'll, we'll continue to build on it and get better. All right, so the the build continues. We'll see uh, DJ Chark down the stretch. I know he's been battling some injury stuff throughout this season and, and fighting through, but he has that the mindset to, to go out and put his body on the line for the football team. Yeah, he's going to play, and I, I'd like to see that chemistry start to pick up between he and Mike Glennon. He did get the seven targets last week, but only two of those uh, completed. So, look, a couple weeks of practice now under their belt, so we'll see if they can – uh, get that connection rolling the way that Mike Glennon has it going with Colin Johnson. It's uh, got to be tougher, though, now because everybody's kind of keying on Chark on the outside defenses and everything. Yeah, but you want to be the big-time number That's one right. guy. That's what's going to happen every week in the National Football League. And, you know, you, you've got a circumstance. There's no other – you know, you, you would think with James Robinson – uh, running the way he is, that would take some attention away from the, the pass targets. But the Jags are behind so much that you know they're going to have to throw a lot as well. And, uh, you know, that's just life in the NFL if you want to be a big-time wide receiver. Another receiver who's stepped up and played well the last couple of weeks is Colin Johnson, the rookie out of Texas. More time means more comfort. I definitely think the more I play, the more comfortable I get. Um, and I think what he meant by that is, you know, I do it in practice and, fin- you know, I'm seizing the moment in the game now. And so I'm happy it's just finally showing. And I'm just excited to keep getting more comfortable and building off of it and pushing myself each and every week. Big body, can run a little bit, mm-hmm. and starting to really grow here as the season progresses. Yeah, you talked about it earlier, you know, uh, had it not been – uh, had, he, had he come out earlier, might have been a, a higher draft pick and you would have expected more out of him. But uh, it doesn't matter once you get here. He's taking advantage of his opportunities now. And I think down the stretch, he'll consent, uh, continue to see them go to him, JP. Because that's the thing. Keelan Cole's having a nice season, but he's not under contract beyond 2020. And you don't know if he's a part of the future. So I think, uh, you know, for the development of this football team, the best thing to do is get Colin Johnson on the field a lot amongst the wide receivers. DJ Chark, LaVisca, Chenault, and Colin Johnson, those are the guys you're going to count on having here in 2021. Even if it's not this coaching staff, uh, that's the best thing that can happen, I think, for this wide receiver group. Let's go to the offensive line. Brandon Linder is out for today's game, so Tyler Shatley will start at center, and rookie Ben Barch will get a start at Left guard today for the Jaguars. He's getting more playing time lately, and head coach Doug Marone likes what he sees so far. I mean, I think he did a much better job in protection last week, and I think, you know, so he's trending in the right direction. So, you know, I'm happy with him. I mean, he's a tough guy. He's a, you know, he he can move. He's a big guy. He plays multiple positions. I think it's one of those things where, 
you know, as, as we work our way through the season and then playing, it's going to make him better. And then I think we got to figure out, you know, what's the best position for him because he can play multiple positions. Well, this will be a, a key stretch here for Barch in his development. And let's be honest, this is a developmental player. It's not a guy, you know, it's a, a, a mid, mid-round draft pick from a small school mm-hmm. trying to build himself into an NFL offensive lineman. That takes – a little bit of time, but Barch has an opportunity here in the final four weeks. Yeah, he probably was oftentimes the best player or athlete on the field when he was in college. It's just true for a lot of these guys. But in his case in particular, you hear from Tony Baselli and Jeff Logman that Barch has really needed to develop his pass blocking skills. But let's keep in mind, you know, the way the offensive line was set up this year, barring injury, you didn't expect Barch to get a lot of playing time anyway. And you, you wanted to him to develop kind of in the background. So I think this is good as well, JP. Let's find out what the guy's got. I, I got to imagine, you know, I don't think, you know, winning a game to me doesn't carry over from one year to the next. It doesn't mean your team's going to get out to a hot start. But the development of young players – and their playing time and the confidence that they get from having whatever success they might have, that does carry over. So this is big for Ben Barch. Let's go to the defense. Derrick Henry, of course, the Titans running back, has a history against the Jaguars, a history of stiff arms included in that. Defensive coordinator Todd Wash says they've worked on it in practice this week. You know, we've seen it, uh, once again, many, many times that he's got a hell of a stiff arm, and, and we we work drills specifically, obviously, this week when we go against Derrick every, every time we play him. Uh, now I'm curious, what goes into preparing for a stiff arm? <laughs> we, we just do drills and stuff. Uh, we emphasize this week um obviously chopping it and then trying to get your eyes to his thighs and stuff so it's just one thing you know i mean everybody works on it but this week we specifically set time aside uh to make sure we're working on how to defeat a uh, stiff arm yeah it's been a focus they've taken time out of practice to to work on it and that's not abnormal i think they do that when henry comes along and um, twice a year, they have to get ready for a little different type of style running back in Henry. Yeah, I don't know if there's a good answer for the Derrick Henry stiff arm, by the way. If there was, I think somebody <laughs> would have figured it out and everybody would have copied him. Uh, he is massive. He is strong. He's got speed. I mean, he's got everything you want. And when he gets ahead of steam and he throws that arm out there, I mean, we've seen him use it to devastating effect on the Jaguars, and he does it to everybody. So the thing is, don't let him get ahead of steam, and the stiff arm is not as effective. Jared Wilson, free safety for the Jaguars, does not want to be on a highlight reel. He didn't got that 6'4 arm out there. You know what I mean? I mean, he's kind of – he's coming around the edge at 250 pounds at 6'4, so he already got that uh, length advantage. But not trying to be on that tape, you know, try to cut his legs down, get him down the best way I can. Definitely not trying to be on a stiff arm tape. No, nobody wants to be on a stiff arm tape. And, yeah, go low. Go to the that's legs. What he, and... That's what it is, right? Cut those legs out, man. That's what you got to do. It's, by the way, that's not a treat either, you no, know, when no. those tree trunks are coming <laughs> at you. But it's the lesser of evils, I think. Yeah, I think so. Dewan Smoot on the defensive line playing well lately. The D-line getting better with some relative unknowns up there the last few weeks. Smoot says, even though the team hasn't played well, it is still a close group. Um, because of all the ups and downs, I mean, we've been able to pick each other up. And, you know, we've been able to get to know each other even more. We've been a lot closer because of all the, you know, the bad things that have been happening. And just knowing that we have been having a lot of injuries and a lot of, you know, uncertainty, we've, we've, been, we've been able to come closer, you know, personally. So we're just trying to work on our relationships and stuff like that. And that's obviously been, been translating on the field due to this past week. So we're just trying to keep it going. All right, Dwan Smoot's in a contract year. He's a draft pick, of course, from about four years ago now. And he's getting an opportunity down the stretch here to get uh, really some of the most playing time he's had in his career. He's taken advantage of it, particularly over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as he said this week, he's already bought a house here in Jacksonville. Love to stay, right? We like to have him be part of the picture, JP. It's just really tough to know what the priorities are going to be because we don't know who's going to be making those decisions with a new general manager coming in eventually and how they'll feel about Dewan Smoot. But I think he's a nice depth piece, uh, ideally not a starter for you. But, uh, you know, if they can keep him around and, and find a price point that works for both sides, I think that would be fantastic. The Jaguars game day radio broadcast is presented by Vistar Credit Union. If you believe no car payment for 90 days is better, join Vistar. A standard feature on new or used car loans, and Vistar never forgets that it's your money. We're back in a moment with a look around the National Football League in week 14 and a little later, first rounds on us. Jeff Logman and Tony Baselli 
from the broadcast booth. The Titans and the Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock. This is the Publix Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. If you've ever been in a vehicle crash, then you know the impact caused by a collision. Now imagine the force of a crash so great, people are killed. My name is Eric. I sat behind the wheel and drove drunk. I caused a crash that killed two young women, Megan and Lisa. Now, I sit alone in my jail cell. Megan and Lisa were taken forever, and their families and friends were left devastated. Don't drink and drive, and remember our roadways are connected to our families. This message brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202-4YOU or visit GetBetterJacks.com. Everyone's so busy keeping up. Forget about the Joneses. We all on our telephones with the texts and the tweets and the beats. What he said, she said, can't even follow the thread. Down the hole, we all go. Me, I like keeping up too with my corona and my attitude. That's La Vida Masfina. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer. Imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Brooks Rehabilitation outpatient locations throughout Florida are currently open and accepting in-person and telehealth appointments. They're following CDC guidelines to include screenings, temperature checks, face masks, social distancing, and additional sanitizing of all surfaces. They're taking extra precautions to ensure your safety so you can focus on your recovery. Please call their central intake unit at 904-345-7277, option 3, to schedule your visit. Brooks Rehabilitation is the official rehabilitation provider for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Florida drivers and motorcycle riders, don't fumble. Do your part to stay safe on our roadways. Florida has observed a significant number of motorcycle fatalities and crashes. Drivers, watch for motorcycles. Don't drive distracted. Motorcycles are hard to see. Take the extra effort to look for them. Riders play defense. Always ride responsibly. Wear proper gear and make yourself more visible. Get trained and never drink and ride. On the road, safety is worth way more than two points. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. The Publix Tailgate Show continues. Titans-Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock. Today's game presented by PRI Productions. Farah and Farah reminds you to continue to wear a mask and help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Farah and Farah, protecting you and your family since 1979. Mike, how about a look around the NFL? Well, some players expected to be out today for a variety of reasons, including injury, being on the COVID-19 list, suspension. Uh, We won't break them down individually, but the guys uh, that you should not expect to see on the field today include wide receiver Brandon Cooks, For the Houston Texans, uh, DJ Moore, wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers, a pair of Denver cornerbacks, A.J. Boye, the former Jaguar, along with Bryce Callahan, a running back David Johnson of Houston, Miami running back Miles Gaskin is out today, uh, and he has company there. Savant Ahmed and Matt Breida all out for the Dolphins in that running back room, so uh, it looks like uh, DeAndre Washington will likely get the start. Alexander Madison still recovering from his appendectomy is out for the Vikings, as is Eric Hendricks. We saw him get hurt in pregame warm-ups against the Jaguars last week. Kenny Galladay and Jeff Akuda of the Lions, Jay Sternberger of the Packers, Denzel Mims of the Jets, Julio Jones not going to play today for Atlanta, nor will Antonio Gibson for the Washington football team. Joe Hayden and Robert Spillane among the latest Pittsburgh Steelers suffering injuries as that defense is getting a little bit more depleted 
as we go. There's your look around the NFL. We're back in a moment with First Rounds on Us, our weekly visit with our resident first rounders, Tony Vaselli and Jeff Lagerman from the broadcast booth, ahead of the Titans and the Jaguars. A one o'clock kick time. This is the Public's Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. Jaguars fans, Brian Sexton here. I've discovered something that will take your tailgate to the next level this football season. Bernie Grills. You've never seen anything like these portable all-wood grills. Bernie's are convenient, affordable, and simple to use with no messy cleanup. Bernie's real alder wood flavor makes burgers and brats taste delicious. I grilled some steaks on mine the other night, and they were incredible. So get your Bernie Grill for the next game at BernieGrill.com or at Amazon. Bernie Grill. Light. Grill. Done. Hey, Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field and valet park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent, sponsored by Alert Today Florida, near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secured during the game. When the game's over, return your claim ticket and pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. Hi folks, Frank Frangie here for the best barbecue in town, that's Bono's. And now it's the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. All season long, you can get Bono's barbecue at six different locations in Everbank Field. You also get Bono's barbecue at 15 locations all around town with fast, friendly service, clean family restaurants, and that great, great taste of Bono's barbecue. If you want great barbecue, you want Bono's. And remember this, if they're in a pit, it ain't legit. That's Bono's. Committed to the team, committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission, we're nonprofit. So we pass the savings along to our members because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Jaguars fans, be there for the final home game of the year as the Chicago Bears visit TIAA Bank Field December 27th. It's our annual fan appreciation game and our chance to say thank you for being Duval together all year long. Tickets are still available at Jaguars.com or by calling 904-633-2000. Bring the noise to the bank to help close out the year with a bang. Second touchdown of the game from James Robinson. Visit Jaguars.com slash tickets today. Everyone's so busy keeping up. Forget about the Joneses. We all on our telephones with the texts and the tweets and the beats. What he said, she said, can't even follow the three. Down the hole, we all go. Me, I like keeping up too with my corona and my attitude. That's La Vida Masfina. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer. Imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. The Publix Tailgate Show continues. The Titans and the Jaguars coming up at 1 o'clock. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, and now time for First Rounds on Us. New York Jets, first round choice. Jeff Lagerman. Jacksonville Jaguars have selected tackle Southern California. Our resident first-round picks, Jeff Lagerman and Tony Baselli from the broadcast booth upstairs at TIAA Bank Field. Good morning, gentlemen. How's the fog now, by the way? Uh, it's not bad. I mean, you can probably see almost all the way across to the other side of the bridge, so it's starting to clear up a little oh, bit. That's, that's clear. That's clear as day. That's plenty. Crystal that's clear. All you need today. Um, so, uh, the Jags have dropped 11 in a row. The first loss of those 11 was against these Tennessee Titans back in week two. That seems like a long, long time ago, and of course... Guys, these two teams have gone in totally opposite directions. Well, they certainly have, and uh, Tennessee is in the lead right now in the division because of the better division record than the Indianapolis Colts. And you know, But look, the Tennessee Titans are not without issues either. I mean, their defense has struggled at times last week. They got 
hammered by the Cleveland Browns in the first half, and in the entire second half, Tennessee was just trying to play catch-up to make it a ball game, and it kind of got close at the end, but it really wasn't close. So, uh, look, I think this game will be competitive today, just like most times that uh, teams in a division face off. Jeff, you're being way too kind to <laughs> Tennessee's defense. It's, <laughs> it is atrocious. I mean, they are. I mean, just look at the numbers. I mean, and look at the games they've played this year. They and they're the worst on third down. They can't get off the field. Worse than sacks. I mean, they're. T- I mean, they are terrible. <laughs> I know, I know. I but mean, you know what? Look, they don't even have a defensive coordinator. So who are we going to pin the blame? Blame Ray Ball. He's the guy. <laughs> Give it on him. I mean, so they're just. I mean, and they have no difference makers on defense. I mean, their linebackers are okay, um, but they're just. They, they they don't pressure the quarterback. They're average against the run, and they're just terrible on third down. So, well, this is, and my point is, this is an opportunity for this Jaguars offense. That you can get some things going, and I, I think they're going to have some success. And I'm with you, Jeff. I do think it's a close game. I think it's back and forth, and I think it'll be decided by turnovers probably in the second half. Well, if you go back and look at the Jaguars' turnover record all, all games this year, the only game that they were plus two was the first game in which they beat Indianapolis. And, uh, look, if, if you end up finding a way to end up plus one, plus two against this Tennessee team, you got a chance. If you stop Derrick Henry and minimize his damage – I believe you can beat this Tennessee team here today. Yeah, and because I think Derrick Henry, as is, is you look at him, I mean, obviously everyone knows, you know, on, on path or has an opportunity to win the rushing title back-to-back years. Um, he's not just the driver of the offense, Jeff, in my opinion. He's the engine of this whole team. Like, when he's playing and oh, they yeah. get him going. He's the energy. Like, everything's different for this Titan team. And, and so that's why it is critical. you got to get him early. And, and it's not just getting him early. Because we've seen games where he's better in the second half. So, like, you're doing a good job, doing a good job, you're doing a good job. Next thing you know, man, that freight train gets rolling, and it's out of control. And so that is the key to the game. You know, it's amazing, JP and Mike, how few of catches that he has in the passing game. And obviously it doesn't matter because, I mean, he's he's a workhorse running back, not a workhorse receiving back. But it's still surprising. As much as he plays, you would think that he would have a, a few more catches, but he, he doesn't have many. And I think, and I think, guys, last week he only had 15 carries, so he's going to be fresh. And I think he's, in, after watching that film against Cleveland, when he got stopped uh, on the one-yard line when it was one-on-one, and, he, like, almost he didn't turn. Like, it was not a physical play for Derrick Henry. I think he's going to see that tape and say, um, that's not good, and I have something to prove, and I think you're going to get the best of Derrick Henry, so you better bring your best. If you're the, you're the Jaguars' defense. Well, you know, the, the irony is, guys, they did a really good job against Derrick Henry when they played in week two. He got held to 3.4 yards per carry, but Ryan Tannehill went out and threw four touchdowns. So is there reason to believe the Jaguars might perform better against Tennessee's passing game today than they did then? Well, I'm not very hopeful uh, that they can be better in the passing game, but I think they can be a little bit better versus Derrick Henry that gives them a chance to be better in the passing game. You know, the issue is with the Jaguars secondary, Mike, and, that, and we all know what the issues are with there. And if, if Sidney Jones can play today, which I, I hear that he end up is, end up, uh, will end up playing today, and if he does, that'll help. If he's, if he's 100%. I mean, we don't know. I mean, he hasn't played in, in, what, four games? I mean, so, I mean, it's a long time being out to come back and kind of hit the ground running. So, uh, could they be better? Yeah, because Adam Humphreys is out for them. Jonu Smith is coming back from an injury. Um, Brown has not been at his best. He's coming off a game where he had drops. He's had fumbles. Corey Davis has uh, obviously been a, a major factor. But, yeah, I think they can be better. Yeah, but, Jeff, all the guys you just said, they have three studs in the passing game. Brown, Davis, and Jonu Smith. Yeah, but one's had issues and one's been uh, hurt. I get that. You know, and, so. and, and a little bit of the drops for A.J. Brown, but you have to be – I mean, these guys are explosive. Mike, I, I think you make a great point because we always focus on Derrick Henry, which is you have to for all the reasons we just said. But Tannehill is a capable quarterback, and they got weapons outside. This isn't the old Titans that if you stopped Derrick Henry, game, set, match, it's over. They have weapons outside as well. Have you seen Tannehill's numbers against the Jaguars in, in its entirety? I mean, they're impressive. 69.7% completion percentage, 12 touchdowns, two interceptions, and a 115 rating. No, he's been, he's but, pretty good. But he's been good ever since the last nine games last year. And for this season, he's one of the better quarterbacks if you look at the numbers in the NFL. I mean, he's a really good player. All right, which one of you guys is taking him in fantasy? <laughs> Mike Dempsey, Mike, you're going to take him. I know it. I just know it. <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't have the first pick, so I know who Mike is. Mike, Mike's taking Derrick Henry. I guarantee you that today. Might not get that chance. <laughs> might not, get, might, might might not, not. be available <laughs> at that point. Uh, Jaguars quarterback news this week, at least the headlines. Mike Glennon's getting the start. Uh, Gardner Minshew was in the media earlier in the week saying he was begging to get back on the field. Well, I mean, it's a 1-11 team. Let's get serious here. The quarterback headlines are what they are. But in the long-term grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter in the big picture. I find it interesting that he's begging to get back onto the field and play, and yet we just watched the warm-up on the field with you know the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and the tight ends, and he was nowhere to be found. Yeah, it's not really the message you want to send if you want to be begging to get on the field. I think Mike Glennon's going to be the quarterback the rest of the year. I don't think you see Gardner Minshew again outside of an injury. Um, or something just so horrendous that Doug has no choice. I, I mean, even, you know, Jeff, reading the comments this week of, of uh, offensive coordinator Jay Gruden, wasn't warm and fuzzy towards uh, Gardner Minshew, and it, it, it really gave me the opinion, or at least the, the thought reading that. It, Jay Gruden's like, uh, Mike Lennon's our quarterback. I'm not really worried about Gardner Minshew. All right, guys, we'll come back in a moment. Fantasy. The Geico Fantasy segment coming up in just a moment. This is the Publix Tailgate Show ahead of the Titans and the Jaguars on Jaguars Radio. Some things make a house your home like clean, fresh sheets that make a bed with the soothing scent of fabric softener your thing. When drying clothes with natural gas, you get faster, gentler drying times, save money, and earn a rebate up to $150. Your home. Our safe, reliable, efficient energy. Love natural gas. Find rebate details at peoplesgas.com. You won't find a better deal to keep your ride clean than Scrubble's Flexible Service Car Wash. Start in the tunnel wash and experience state-of-the-art equipment while enjoying a soapy light show. Our quality soaps and solutions keep your vehicle streak-free. Every three-minute car wash package comes with self-serve vacuuming, lint-free towels, window cleaner, and a free air freshener. Visit us at the St. John's Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. And coming soon to Kernan in Atlantic. Trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. Go Jags! Jaguars fans, whether it's on the field or in your finances, the key to success is a solid plan. From high-yield banking to home lending, into retirement and beyond, TIAA Bank offers solutions that can help you achieve your goals and make the most of your money. It's time for a plan. Start building your legacy today at TIAABank.com slash Jaguars. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSP, member FDIC, equal housing lender and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports watching drink of all time, Pepsi. With refreshing deliciousness specially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouthwatering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong. I used to care when Mike chaired so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet, but thanks to Pepsi, even Mike can't ruin my football party. <sighs> so this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Hey, Florida drivers and motorcycle riders, don't fumble. Do your part to stay safe on our roadways. Florida has observed a significant number of motorcycle fatalities and crashes. Drivers, watch for motorcycles. Don't drive distracted. Motorcycles are hard to see. Take the extra effort to look for them. Riders play defense. Always ride responsibly. Wear proper gear. Make yourself more visible. Get trained and never drink and ride. On the road, safety is worth way more than two points. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Need the perfect gift for the NFL fan in your life? Go to NFLshop.com and get their favorite player's jersey, personalized gifts, or next favorite hat. With daily holiday deals and the ultimate gift guide, NFLshop.com has you covered. Shop now for the most up-to-date assortment for all 32 teams, including face coverings. You'll choose from the largest selection of NFL gifts anywhere. NFL Shop is the destination for their favorite team's gear. Head to NFLshop.com today to start checking off your gift list.
Welcome back to the Public Tailgate Show. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey from the Hanania Subaru of Orange Park Studio at TIAA Bank Field. The Titans and the Jaguars coming up, and today's game is presented by PRI Productions. Time now for the Geico Fantasy Outlook. Great news. There's a quick way you could save money. Switch to Geico. Go to geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Tony and Jeff back with us in the booth. Frank Frangi with us for the first time today. Mike Dempsey with me in studio. Where are the standings? For the record, I think I'm being goaded into taking Derrick Henry. (laughs) I think this is Jeff uh, Lagerman's plan because he knows he's the only other one who hasn't used him. I think he's trying to shame me into not taking Derrick Henry so he can take him today. So Hmm. that's my theory on this. We'll see how it all works out. Jeff is newly in first place after an 86-point week last week with Deshaun Watson, David Montgomery, and Devontae Adams all scoring at least 26 apiece. Thank you very much. I was in second with 53, so I am uh, now eight points behind Jeff, 737 to 729. JP's at 697. He had 52, as did Frank last week. And Tony Baselli brought up the rear with a meager 32 points, and he had Derrick Henry, and he only scored him seven last week. So uh, Frank and Tony are now tied oh, for fourth place with 636 points. Here is the draft that order. That would be last place. Uh, right? that, that is correct. We look at it to make Jeff. sure. Okay. You can look at it however you want. The seller, to us. whatever you want to say. Uh, we've got Tony old bat leadoff, JP, then Frank. I'm fourth, and Jeff will have the first back-to-back pick. So, uh, Baselli, the board is yours. Chris Carson. Chris Carson. All right. JP. JD McKissick. McKissick. Okay. Frank. Ben Roethlisberger. All right. Ben. Uh, I'm going to go with Robbie Anderson at wide receiver. My first pick. Jeff. Um, I will take Eckler. He... Austin Eckler. Hmm. Okay. Oh. He's not going Derrick Henry. Hmm. And you get one more. Here. And I will take Allen Robinson. Hey, Rob. Hmm. All right. Uh, I am going to keep the drama going as I take uh, Tom Brady at quarterback, mm. leaving my running back spot unfilled. Frank, you're next. Uh, David Montgomery, please. Montgomery. Okay, JP. Uh, is Justin Jefferson available? Uh, he is. I'll take him. He's no longer available now. Uh, Tony, you get your quarterback and your pass catcher. I'm going uh, Mike Lennon. Okay. And Colin mm-hmm. Johnson. All right. C. Johnson. Double up on points It's here. the freedom of last place that lets you just yeah. pick yeah, I, I, like. At this point, I'm like, might as well root for the guys I'm watching. <laughs> right on. Uh, <laughs> JP. Uh, Deshaun Watson. Watson. Frank need a wide receiver or a tight end here? I think I want Travis Kelsey this week. Kelsey. Uh, I am not taking Derrick Henry. I'm taking Aaron Jones at running back and need a quarterback, Jeff. Justin Herbert. Herbert. All right, here's what we've got. Uh, we've got Tony with Mike Glennon, Chris Carson, Colin Johnson. JP goes to Sean Watson, J.D. McKissick, and Justin Jefferson. Frank has Ben Roethlisberger, David Montgomery, and Travis Kelsey. I'll go with Tom Brady, Aaron Jones, and Robbie Anderson. And for Jeff, it's Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, and Allen Robinson. And again, logs with a, an eight-point lead at the top. Uh, as we head into week, 14. and we only have what two weeks left, right? Hey, 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 go Chargers! This is correct. Two weeks left because we after this in, week. in week seventeen we always just recap. So two right. weeks after this one, you correct. know, all I want to make sure at this point I'm not going to win. It's impossible, I think. Um, I just want to make sure JP doesn't win, so he can be the only person who has yet to win the championship. <laughs> so, well, let's go, really Logs. Nice. Let's go, Dempsey. Come on, we'll, we'll I love see you hard for you guys. Uh, JP, what forty points out of first place right now? So, holiday holiday cheer. Good luck, guys. Merry Christmas to you, too, Tony. (laughs) Uh, Thanks a lot. Uh, There you have it, the Geico Fantasy Outlook for Week 14. The the contest continues for the next couple weeks, and we'll uh, be back in just a moment. Let's take a time out. The Frangie File, when we return, this is the Publix Tailgate Show ahead of the Titans and Jaguars on Jaguars Radio.
The best way to feel love is to share it at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park. We always go the extra mile with bigger selection, more savings, our best service. Only Subaru of Orange Park gives you a nationwide lifetime warranty and one year complimentary maintenance on new and used vehicles. Plus, when you get a new Subaru during the Subaru Share the Love event, Subaru will donate $250 to your choice of charities at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park. Online at Subaru of Orange Park.com. See dealer website for full details. Hey, Jags fans, heading to TIAA Bank for a game? Take advantage of Jags Pay and keep your stadium transactions touch free. Jags Pay is an all new partnership between the Jaguars and Tappet to give our fans a contactless payment option for all concessions and merchandise. It's fast, safe, and easy to use. Just download the official Jaguars app on any mobile device, tap Jags Pay, and set up your secure payment method. You're all set. To learn more, visit jaguars.com slash jagspay. See you at the bank. Jaguars fans, Brian Sexton here. I've discovered something that will take your tailgate to the next level this football season. Bernie Grills. You've never seen anything like these portable all-wood grills. Bernie's are convenient, affordable, and simple to use with no messy cleanup. Bernie's real alder wood flavor makes burgers and brats taste delicious. I grilled some steaks on mine the other night, and they were incredible. So get your Bernie Grill for the next game at BernieGrill.com or at Amazon. Bernie Grill. Light. Grill. Done. Everyone's so busy keeping up. Forget about the Joneses. We all on our telephones with the texts and the tweets and the beats. What he said, she said, can't even follow the three. Down the hole, we all go. Me, I like keeping up, too, with my corona and my attitude. That's La Vida Mas Fina. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer. Imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, the CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing staffing firms in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI knows how important it is to find the right people for your team. See why some of Jacksonville's top companies choose CSI for their staffing needs. Visit thecsicompanies.com or call 800-582-0828 today. That's 800-582-0828 for the CSI Companies. Hey, Florida drivers and motorcycle riders, don't fumble. Do your part to stay safe on our roadways. Florida has observed a significant number of motorcycle fatalities and crashes. Drivers, watch for motorcycles. Don't drive distracted. Motorcycles are hard to see. Take the extra effort to look for them. Riders play defense. Always ride responsibly. Wear proper gear and make yourself more visible. Get trained and never drink and ride. On the road, safety is worth way more than two points. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Welcome back to the Publix Tailgate Show ahead of the Titans and the Jaguars. Today's game presented by PRI Productions. 1 o'clock kickoff time in Week 14. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey. Time for the inactives. The Jaguars have seven players down today. Quarterback Jake Luton inactive. So Gardner Minshew is the active backup today for Mike Glennon, the starter. Luke Barku, the corner, is inactive. He's played the last couple weeks, but not today. Kamale Correa, former Titan, is inactive, the linebacker. Quincy Williams is out today. Center Brandon Linder is out. Tyler Shatley will start in his position at center. And Ben Barch gets to start at left guard today. Tyler Davis, the rookie tight end, has been active a, a good part of this season. He's out again today. And Reggie Gilbert, the defensive end, is also inactive. The Jags also made a change at kicker over the weekend. Uh, Chase McLaughlin is gone, so Aldrick Roses is back up and will be the Jaguars kicker today, Mike. All right, the official uh, inactive list for the Titans out as well. A couple of guys in the secondary, including Kenny Vaccaro, who had been listed as questionable with an illness coming in. He had a big game with 10 solo tackles against the Jaguars in Week 2, so he will not be available, nor will cornerback Dory Jackson. He's been out for a while now. A uh, pair of running backs, Darrington Evans and Deonta Foreman, and outside linebacker Wyatt Ray concludes that list. There you have it. The inactives are in. We're getting close to game time now as the Jaguars host the Tennessee Titans. Time now for the Frank Frangie file. We visit a little longer with the voice of the Jaguars from the broadcast booth as the fog clears. And the Jaguars try to snap an 11-game losing skid against the first-place Titans. 
And it's a tough matchup today. This Titans offense, as we've talked about all day, uh, Frank, is, has not just Henry, which is bad enough. They've got some other weapons out there, too. Yeah, no, you're right, JP. A couple things. Number one, you're right. It, man, it was foggy when we got in here. Now it's beautiful. So the fog is burned off as we expected. What a beautiful day here. Just looking out over the field now as the specialists are out there. Yeah, the, the Titans are, are more diverse offensively than they've been in a while. Tannehill's played well since he got there. He has been what a find he's been for them. The Mariota thing didn't work out. Tannehill didn't work out in Miami. That was a match made in heaven for those two, so you're right. But I'll tell you this. I think it's a high-scoring game. The Titans aren't very good defensively. 25th in the league, but both score again, total defense. The Jags have played a little better offensively. I think Mike Glennon started enough games now that he has a feel for his teammates. J-Rob continues to play well. I think we have some points in this game. It'll be fun to watch today. Uh, Frank, are we going to see the emergence over the last month of the season of the more prominent role for the tight ends here? Has Mike Glennon really got him involved? Uh, last week against Minnesota. And if you look back to week two, uh, O'Shaughnessy and Eifert had a combined seven catches for 76 yards, one of their most productive games of the season with Eifert finding the end zone as well. So looks like that's starting to open up with Glennon under center. Yeah, a little bit. And you know what, Mike? Ve good point. Veteran quarterbacks like tight ends. I almost think the older the quarterback is, the more he's played, the more he wants to lean on his tight end. And Mike's been around the league for a while. So, yeah, I think you'll see a little bit of that. Um, again, I think we see an offensive game. So, uh, And if you do, it's interesting. We've seen how they use those guys. Tyler Eifert pretty much just plays in passing downs. Uh, they don't like him as a blocking tight end, it appears. So when he's in the game, yeah, I would expect him to be targeted a lot. That seems to be uh, where Mike Glennon likes to go. And, I, look, it's a tight end league, man. I think we've always talked about the one thing the Jags have never quite figured out is get that pass-catching tight end and have him here for a while. So, yeah, I think you see some of that today. I do. What more can we say about James Robinson? We're kind of running out of things here, yeah. but he's had a fantastic season in an undrafted rookie campaign, and there's really not that feeling four games to go that he's going to slow down at all. He's He's got his head on straight. He does things right in the building. He has his body in shape. And the way he runs uh, gives him an opportunity, I think, to, to finish strong here down the stretch. How about this stat, JP? James Robinson has 212 carries this year. He has 12 negative runs. That means 12 times all year long did he get tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Think about we watch every game. We call every play. Think about how many times you've seen him, we've seen him, we've all seen him, get hit behind the line or get hit at the line and what looks like a negative play – or a no gain becomes a four-yard gain. Think about that, how many times we've seen that. I think he's a terrific player. I think at some point you start thinking about, look, he's your future. Let's not run him as much. I wouldn't be surprised to see more of Ogunbowale. They, they, he got his first carries last week. I wouldn't be surprised seeing, you know, with Chris Thompson down, James Robinson's also been the third down back. Yes. So I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of, of a less of a workload these last four games. Uh, do you think we'll see a better connection between Mike Glennon and DJ Chark today, Frank? Boy, that's the question, right? I mean, is, is DJ Chark last year had the terrific year, Mike? Um, it looked like there was a connection between he and Minshew. That thing went bad. DJ's been banged up a little bit. That's real. If you're going to hit anything over the top, that's the thing, right? I mean, that that that's it. So he's still your home run threat. If Robinson's your every down threat, as good as Chenault can be when healthy, is as much as Tyler Eifert's given him a little bit more of a pass receiving tight end. Man, Mike DJ Chark's still the home run. He's still got to hit some home runs. He's still the home run, home run guy. So let's hope for sure. Frank Frangie with us from the broadcast booth. All right, Frank, I've never been stiff-armed on a football field before. Yeah, yeah. On a football field, I'll right. say. Mm. Um, oh, I like that. Now we've seen what that can do, though, for Derrick Henry. It's his main weapon in his arsenal, and it is a tough, tough ask for this defense to, and any defense, really, to, to break through and, and battle against that. And, in fact, they, they spent time in practice this week trying to work on chopping the stiff arm and going low, eyes to the thighs and all that. You can practice all you want, but until you see that freight train coming at you, you don't know really how you're going to react. JP, the whole key to that is is, is tackling, him near, tackling him near the line of scrimmage. That's the whole key to this. The Jags did a pretty good job on him last time, and for that reason, there weren't a whole lot of stiff arms. He doesn't stiff arm anybody in the backfield. That's right. He doesn't stiff arm anybody between the tackles. Those stiff arms come in the open field when he's already 10 or 15 yards downfield, and it's one-on-one -on -one Derrick Henry against a cornerback or a safety or an undersized linebacker at times, and that's a mismatch. So tackle him near the line of scrimmage. You want to keep him from stiff arming you? Don't let him get 5 or 10 yards downfield. That's the whole key to stopping him, 
and he plays better when it gets later in the season. He plays better in cold weather. Of course, we have a beautiful day today. But he gets going, man. He, he's better in November and December than he is any other time of year. Tackle him near the line of scrimmage. That's easier said than done, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, and JP, I like the fact that you haven't been stiff-armed only on the field. I get that's it. That's right. I get it. Uh, you know, other I'm with you. I'm get him right here in the break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, JP, I got it all the way, brother. I'm with you. I get it. Uh, Frank, uh, the problem is they did a good job on Derrick Henry the first time around. 3.4 yards per carry. You would take that right now out of him, and the Titans still put up 33. So, as you alluded to earlier, uh, you're going to have to score some points today if you're going to beat this football team. Mike, the Jags are last in the league in total defense. The Titans are 25th in the league in total defense. It's a beautiful day. Both quarterbacks are veteran guys. Both teams have really good running backs. I would be surprised if there's not some points here. I, 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 would, I think it's a 31-24 kind of game, which we haven't had a lot of those. I, I think it's going to be entertaining. And you're right. To win the game, the Jags are going to have to score some. Frank, have a great call today. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, boys, thanks. Frank Frangi from the broadcast booth at TIAA Bank Field. We're back in a moment with our weekly visit with the Ozone. Jaguars.com senior writer right around the corner. The Titans and the Jaguars coming up, and this is the Public Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat, more cheese, more veggies, more quality, more taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash, made fresh, Daly's. At ViStar, we believe in better, especially in helping build a better financial future for our members. So we've reviewed our offerings from the ground up. We've lowered or eliminated over half our fees and enhanced our already competitive rates, saving members more than a million dollars this year, in addition to the millions we save them every year. If you believe that saving money is better, join ViStar. We never forget that it's your money. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. Jaguars fans, whether it's on the field or in your finances, the key to success is a solid plan. From high-yield banking to home lending, into retirement and beyond, TIAA Bank offers solutions that can help you achieve your goals and make the most of your money. It's time for a plan. Start building your legacy today at TIAABank.com slash Jaguars. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSP, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey guys, I want to take a break here because I'm so excited to talk to you all about this experience Eric Dunn and I are hosting this season called Jags at Home. This thing is for anyone that could use an extra $10,000. I mean, who couldn't? And the Jaguars are actually giving away $2,500 every quarter of every game to whoever predicts the outcome of the game most accurately. Will the Jaguars convert this third down? What will be the result of this red zone trip? If you think you know football and the Jaguars, why are you letting other people take this money that should be yours? It's not like if you top the leaderboard, you have a chance to win. If you top the leaderboard, you will win $2,500 every quarter, every game. Seriously. So when you're watching the game every week, visit jagsathome.com on a mobile device, tablet, or even a desktop and come get this money. Even better, you get to hang out with me and Eric Dunn while we chat it up during breaks. Again, that's jagsathome.com. We'll see you there. Hey, Florida drivers and motorcycle riders, don't fumble. Do your part to stay safe on our roadways. Florida has observed a significant number of motorcycle fatalities and crashes. Drivers, watch for motorcycles. Don't drive distracted. Motorcycles are hard to see. Take the extra effort to look for them. Riders play defense. Always ride responsibly. Wear proper gear and make yourself more visible. Get trained and never drink and ride. On the road, safety is worth way more than two points. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Final moments of the Publix Tailgate Show. The most important moments of the Publix Tailgate Show ahead. Titans Jaguars at 1 o'clock at TIAA Bank Field. Saving you money on car insurance has been in Geico's playbook for over 75 years. 
So what are you waiting for after the game? Get a quote at Geico.com. These important minutes are with the Ozone. This broadcast is Ozone friendly. The Ozone. Jaguars.com senior writer John Osher joining us as he always does in this slot on the Public's Tailgate Show. John, good morning. Good morning, JP. How are you? We're hanging in there, man. Good. One and eleven, trying yeah. to snap the skid today against the team, today. team that started the skid today. That's right. Yeah, well, and you know, it, it uh, is the team that played this team well up there. Uh, I don't know how much that game pertains to this game at all. Uh, different quarterback for the Jaguars and all the momentum that they felt like they had that day uh, is gone. Although the Jaguars, you know, I think the thing that I've been most impressed with is for the last four or five games, they've maybe played their best football of the season uh, and just can't quite squeeze one out. I, I, I think they have a chance today, but uh, there's a lot of things about this game that worries me, particularly the fact that the Jaguars have played so hard. You wonder how long they're going to be able to sustain that. Uh, John, it's kind of, uh, ironic maybe is not the right word, but uh, not what you would think that when you have a back as big as Derrick Henry that you really want him to run between the tackles because of the way the Titans like to isolate him on the edge. So that's a little bit uh, against what you would expect. But the Jags did a nice job against him back in week two. Do you think they can contain him similarly this time around? You know, it, it's interesting. They've given up a lot of yards to him, obviously, in the second game the last two years. But both of those games were up in Nashville late in the season when you felt like the team was sort of out of gas, meaning the Jaguars. So, you know, I guess it all depends on is this defense, they've run down late in games the last couple weeks against the run, meaning the Browns, they held them in check a little bit, and then the second half the Browns ran well. Sort of the same thing with Dalvin Cook. I think the Jaguars can stop Derrick Henry early today. What you wonder about is – does that stamina and stoutness and depth inside, can they hold up for four quarters? They haven't held up for four, you know, for the entire game the last couple of weeks. That's the phase of the game that worries me is, you know, we've all seen that freight train get going late. Uh, the second half today against Henry worries me. Yeah, those body blows early, then yeah. uh, they pay off later in the game when those big runs happen. Now, uh, quarterback's been in the news this week. Really? I, I don't know if Thanks, you've heard. Jeffy. Uh, Mike Glennon's a starter, third straight week for him. Gardner Minshew was out in the media earlier in the week saying he was begging to get back on the field earlier in the season. It all just feels like it's, well, in the grand scheme of things, none of these quarterbacks, maybe none of these quarterbacks are the, the real future around here anyway. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd be stunned. If, it, if something happens and they're not in uh, one of these guys of the future, I, you know, I just don't see, I don't see a scenario where that's the case. So I think it's a case right now where Glennon, you know, everybody's talking about the thumb injury and are the Jaguars mad about it? Is that why Mitchie's not playing? Look, you know, if – I covered the Colts, JP. I don't remember that. I heard about right? that. If, if Peyton Manning had held a thumb injury away from the coaches, they might have been a little miffed. But they'd have played him. <laughs> so I guess my point is, yes, there was some drama there. If they thought he gave them the best chance to win – it's still what these coaches are all about. It's not about that. They believe that Glennon, the way he runs this offense, the throws he makes, the experience, the whole thing, gives them the best chance. Believe that or not, but that's what's going on. Uh, John, we've noticed that Colin Johnson's come on the last couple weeks, uh, and we know where DJ Chark stands in terms of the importance for this football team on that connection is a work in progress with Mike Glennon. What about LaVisca Chenault? What would you like to see out of him over the last month of the year? Well, I think you'd like to see him on the field the entire four games and sort of put the nagging stuff behind him. And, it, and I'm not in his body, so I don't know how, you know, it, I don't know what he's fought through to be on the field, some hamstring stuff. But that's been his MO in college. That was why he was drafted in the second round, not the first. You want to see him be on the field so that you can get a good four games worth of experience and to, I think to show him that he can do it and, and to give him some momentum going into the offseason. I don't know what's going to happen with Keelan Cole in the offseason. He's a free agent. But I do know that if Chenault shows at the end of the season that he's as good as he has looked at times, then all of a sudden you like DJ Chark, Colin Johnson, and Chenault. They all give you something a little different. They're three different guys. That could be a really good core, but – 
Chenault has to be on the field to be able to be this dynamic player we've all seen. John Osher with us, at John Osher on Twitter, Jaguars.com, senior writer from broadcast booth here at TIAA Bank Field. What more can we say about James Robinson? What's left on the plate for him this year? He's pretty good. Pretty good. How's that? Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> it, it, it's a, he, you know, we've talked on uh, various shows, JP, and I said the same thing to Mike. It's, it's hard to come up with new stuff to say about James Robinson because what makes him so good is he's the same guy every week. So you can sit there and say, boy, he's consistent. He gets a lot out of his runs. I think the thing that's been so impressive is, you know, that, quote, rookie wall, he hadn't seemed to hit it. I, he, he doesn't feel like a rookie to me. He doesn't run like a rookie. Everything you hear about from the coaches is that he doesn't act like it. You know, I think this guy is just going to be a, a, a very, very good running back in this league for a long time. The thing I keep going back to with him, nothing's ever fluky with him. It's not like he's got these 75-yard runs where you point to and say, okay, well, without these carries, his average would be this. He does it every week. Every week he's got two or three 13, 14-yard runs. He's just good. I wish I, I wish I had more entertaining things to say <laughs> about that. But you know, the good news is you've got a really, really good player who I think you can trust. Good is entertaining. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, John, with the exception of the Pittsburgh game, the Jags have been very competitive uh, lately, uh, despite the fact that there's more and more attrition with injured guys, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Do you think that holds, or does the dam break eventually well, here in the last month? That's kind of that's what I've been thinking all week with this game. Is boy. You, you know, they've played the Titans well at home last few years. Everybody's, all Jaguars fans have sort of Titan scars. But the reality is they've played this team pretty good at home. They beat them in 16. They beat them last year, remember, before with all the Jalen Ramsey stuff coming off. I just don't know if late in the season if you can keep coming up with these basically Herculean efforts to stay in games against teams that are better with more incentive than you. I worry about the second half of this game with Henry. That's that's sort of my theme. It's what I'm watching for. That's going to be the theme, I think. Well, John, uh, have a great day today. We'll look for your writing a little bit later, and we'll talk to you as the week goes along here. All right, guys. Thank you. Always enjoy it. John Osier, Jaguars.com senior writer, joining us from the broadcast booth. And the Jags and the Titans coming up. I think uh, a lot of folks are scared about that today, seeing if they, they can contain Henry because we have seen big, explosive days for him. No need to be fearful, JP. What's going to happen is going to happen. Uh, let's hope this defense can give us what they gave us against him in week two. And, and what they gave us last week, too, for that matter. They, they played well against Alvin Cook last week uh, in a losing result, though. Let's come back in a moment. Network coverage begins. Countdown to kickoff around the corner. We'll hear from Fred Taylor, Pete Frisco, and the final word before kickoff with head coach Doug Marone. We're an hour away from the Titans and the Jaguars, and this has been the Public Tailgate Show on Jaguars Radio.